Hello there, people of Earth. This is Todd with Laughing Ghost Studios, coming back four years later to do a follow-up video on my Iwata Hammerhead Shark air compressor. So here it is. You can see it's it's well used, uh, as it has been this studio space. A little messy. I've got some projects going right now. But, uh, geez, what can I say about this thing? It's It's been amazing. This is probably one of the best purchases I've ever made uh, as far as studio equipment. This thing has not given me one single problem. Yeah, it, it's a solid product. The quality level is about as good as you can ask for. And predictability is there. That's a big deal for me with uh, studio equipment is I want it to work the same way each time. I don't like surprises <laughs> like moisture blasting out of my airbrush while I'm painting or you know uh, settings slipping or changing without me changing them and that's one of the things I love about this is uh it catches the moisture and you know of course most air compressors do but it's never spit air out of my uh, lines so you know I've never had a problem with that and these gauges they stay exactly where I put them. They never slip, not even by like one little tick. Because, you know, you can turn your pressure down, turn it back up, hook it back in, and it'll stay that way, I mean, exactly right there until you change it. So the predictability is there. Aside from keeping dust and debris out of it, there are two other maintenance jobs that you have to do every once in a while. Uh, both of them are super easy. Uh, starting with your air tank right here that will accumulate oil and moisture in the bottom of it and you need to blow that out every once in a while so what you do is go underneath the air compressor here there's this little nut um, when you turn it it releases all the excess pressure oil and moisture so what you want to do is put down rags because it'll blow that stuff out everywhere and and, and I've done it. It's went all over the floor, makes a big, gross, oily puddle. So um, make sure you put rags down. The other thing you have to do, speaking of the oil, is back here. So here's the, co the compressor. And you can see right there it says oil, and then oil, and you've got your fill line. It should be halfway. This needs to be filled right now, but after four years of use, I think I've topped it off maybe three times. And I probably wouldn't have even had to do that because it, it runs just fine, you know, at this level, that's barely under the line. All right, so I've gotten a lot of questions about this. How do you fill the oil? Uh, when do you fill the oil? Uh, where do you get the oil? That kind of thing. Um, well, first of all, it comes with a bottle of oil. This one's almost gone. It's not because I used it all in here. It's because I, I've used it for some other things and I, and I spilled it. <laughs> so, uh, But you can see it says on here, high quality synthetic oil for use in sill air and super silent compressors. And that's exactly what this is. It's made for it. You can, you can order it, a replacement bottle from Coast Airbrush. That's where I got the, this compressor. All right, so here's what you do. Just unscrew this. It's just finger tight. You don't want to crank it down. Got a little rubber gasket right there, so that keeps it nice and tight on there. And then you got a hole <laughs> that just goes right down to where the oil is. So you take the spout, wipe it off, I have to get dust or in, anything down in there. All right, and you just pour your oil in. Watch your level down at the bottom. You can't see it because of the way I have the phone positioned. But it doesn't usually take very much. And you don't want to overfill it. So I'm going to stop right there. That was just a... A little, little bit of a maintenance fill. And just screw it down. Hand tight. 
All right, so as you can see, the oil level looks pretty good. It's nice and topped off and we are good to go. All right, so the other thing I wanna do, it's like I did in the last video, um, is a decibel test. Uh, the, the other technical information, I, I pretty much went over everything in the, in the first one, so I'm not gonna say all that again, but I will do a decibel test. So here we go. This is the exact same iPad. Uh, but it's not the same app. I couldn't find the same decibel app, but this should, you know, read the same. Uh, I'm going to be silent for a second, and so you can see what the just the ambient sound in the room is. All right, seems to be pretty sensitive. Okay, let me switch on the air purifier. Yeah, so air purifier, which is a pretty soft noise, goes up to about 45. From quiet to an airbrush spraying, about 67. Okay, moment of truth. I'm gonna go from silent to switching on the compressor. All right, there we go, silent, it's about 32. like we're holding about 62 for the compressor and as you can see when I talk and I'm not shouting and my voice is is louder than the compressor and just like I oops, just like I said in the first video I noticed it sounds way louder on the video than it actually does in person So there you go. Now that's it's purring like a kitten, running like a champ after four years. So in conclusion, I honestly just I can't say enough good things about this. It's a dream come true for a studio air compressor, and I want to really hit a home run on this one. In my opinion, um, they really should put more information out there about it. They they don't really have much as far as uh you know anybody who might be looking for one to find any kind of official information it's, it was really tough I, I searched for weeks and weeks and i barely found anything i could couldn't find any videos of it running i even called coast airbrush and i said hey can you just turn one on for me so i can hear it over their phone and uh <laughs> they said no <laughs> so um I, you know i went ahead and took the plunge and bought it if you watched my first video, then you know it was a thousand bucks. But honestly, over after using it for the last four years, I probably would have paid two thousand, knowing how how good it is. And I can't even really nitpick, you know, if I wanted to try to say there was something I didn't like about it. Um, I guess if you're if you're mobile, you know, you you would not want this because it's big and heavy and rolls around on wheels it's it's not portable um, but as a stationary you know to have in the studio especially if you need something quiet this is the one to go for all right so thank you for watching if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments and i will get back to you we'll see you next time